Welcome to Thinking Particle 6 and the isosurface operator. We have integrated in Thinking Particle 6 the isosurface operator that allows you to create surfaces based on particle positions in space. Before we begin, let me just show you what scene we have here. Let me bring up the user interface and as you can see, we have a position born that creates initial particles, then we animate the position of the particles with our bubble motion operator. And then we have this uh, new operator called Trailborn. That's a thinking particle six operator. We will not discuss what it does. However, we will explain later how to use it. So we have another Trailborn and another one. And we have our implicit shape as well. So let's see how this works. As you can see, we create a really nice 3D structure. It's a growing structure and that's a cool feature in Thinking Particle 6. You can now procedurally create 3D objects. And all these objects are based on particles and positions. So everything you can apply, wind, gravity, fluid, solvers, anything you can imagine. And that's the power of procedural modeling and procedural thinking particles effects. So now let's try rendering these particles or this structure. And as you expect, you can't render them because they are just points in clouds. They have no surface, they have no dimension. Just to prove my point, let's try to find the uh, uh, sun in the rendering. Here we go. So as you can see, no particles visible and we can render the sun. So yes, particles can't be rendered. That's nothing new or spectacular. However, just to make my point, we need something to assign to these particles to create a surface based on their position. So we want to turn this point cloud into a surface. For that, we have a new operator and these Implicit shape operator creates an isosurface based on the particle positions. For now, we will concentrate on just on a few settings and parameters, the scale, the iso value and smoothing, and maybe a little bit the resolution as well. So let me move that out now. So as you remember, we turned on the isosurface operator and now we get a little blob visible. And the first thing you will see, this isosurface operator is amazingly fast. It creates the surface really fast. You can have this playback in real time and you can see how the structure goes. And the more and more particles are created, more and more surface area is created as well. So the whole structure, the whole mesh is always recreated and the isosurface is always evaluated. And the great thing now is we can render this object and with mosquito render we can even do a little thing that's pretty amazing. We can even play back the viewport and we can see mosquito render a real time update of the rendering as well, which is pretty amazing and cool. So if you need to adjust anything in this 3D scene, you can do that actually with Mosquito Render uh, open, with Active Shade open, and you will get instant feedback on your object and uh, surface properties. And again, you can zoom in, you can uh, evaluate every aspect of your rendering or 3D structure. So. There are several settings and parameters, so we can adjust how our 3D object looks like. So we can go ahead and, for example, uh, adjust some basic parameters. But first, let me just grow a little bit more of the structure so that it makes much more fun to play around. And uh, the first thing we are going to do is play around a little bit with the scale. As you can see, right, have a pretty nice uh, connected mesh and it's a pretty high detailed mesh as well. We want to adjust a little bit the uh, structure of our object and we are going to do that by scaling it down. So we reduce the value a little bit 
and when we've done this you will see that our structure becomes much much finer so the issue right now is that we lose some connections between the particles and that can be solved by uh, lowering the ISO value so that our ISO surface field just becomes much, much bigger, ex extends and melts more the particles together. And the result of this would be that we get a much finer detail. And if we increase our resolution of the ISO surface, we can really create highly detailed structures in here. As you can see, we now have these nice, beautiful stick structures here. And that was just one aspect of our ISO surface operator. It can be used in many aspects for fluids, for this kind of objects, even on, on geometry where you turn the vertices into particles. It can also be used for that. Thanks for watching this video.